at these big industrial companies, yeah, we're selling these huge machines, but most of the guys, we use the Enders, we use the other stuff at home. You're at home using your Ender 3, your Prusa, et cetera. You could totally get into this industry. A lot of you guys out there, they're just doing hobbyist stuff. You have a skill set that's needed in the industrial space. All right, guys, we're here today at Ascentium at AMUG 2023, and they've got all kinds of stuff. But first, we're gonna get into the HSE-280i. Now, we've got a few videos on this you can look up for more technical details and whatnot, but we're gonna go into the latest version and everything that's happened over the last few years to improve the machine. So we're here with Evan, yes, and uh, he's gonna give us some details. For those of you that don't know, the HSE is really a production scale-focused machine. It uses linear motors to get insane speeds, custom hot end things to go extremely hot and print ridiculously fast. Ryan, what is the focus of this machine and who's it really for? So the focus of this machine as a 280i with dual head extruders, it's for people who want to either prototype really, really fast, maybe even print uh, two parts at the same time, even have the option to integrate uh, materials, softer materials and harder materials, and even create a uh, soluble support so that you can make some aggressive design choices. And this is an IDEX, but it's not just an IDEX. This is actually one of maybe the one and only machine that uh, on the market that's true IDEX. Are there other machines now? There might've been a few that it's came possible. out. It's possible, it's yeah. possible. As we speak, something's being made. Most IDEX machines, you can only do one axis independently or two, including the Z. These ones are completely separate. So you can actually print two completely different parts at the same time, multiple materials, you can mirror, it's Etc. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of options that you can do. So let's go through the machine. Obviously, starting from the filament itself. Now, you guys started as a materials company, and that's Correct. really still deeply in that heritage. Down here, we see the dry boxes. This is a huge thing, especially for high temperature materials because they absorb moisture from the air. So, what have you guys done with these dry boxes that makes them so special? What we've done here, Rob, is to uh, completely isolate the material, give it a sealed box so that as your material is getting pulled up and fed through the system, there's no room for moisture to just get wicked onto the material. In the back of these canisters, there's two ports in which it circulates, uh, drier air pushes out the wet moisture out, and uh, that's how it works. So how long could you put a spool of Ultim in there for before you need to you know, bake it or something? I'd swap it out maybe once every two days, but you can leave it in yeah. there for up to uh, the week. Swap it out on Monday morning, come in, Turn up your, yeah. uh, your printer and you get it going. And theoretically, if you keep the uh, moisture down low enough, they can oh, yeah. last in there forever, of as long course. as it's running. Of course, yeah. I just like to play it safe, that's all. The next thing I always notice about this, well, not only, you have two extruders, you got an extruder feeder there that's pulling from the box, but then there's this thing, which is really unique. It has to do with extrusion speed, right? Yes, correct. Oh. There's actually this oh, port right here sweet. where you're pulling material through. There's a proximity sensor and a limit switch. We want to make sure that our, our nozzles aren't encumbered by extra weight. And so as this pulls up material, it detects when it needs more material and it just keeps sensing it, feeds more, feeds more. So when it comes too close, this pulls up extra material, this comes in, feeds up, feeds up, feeds up. That's awesome. how it works. So that's like an optical sensor in there? You're correct. Oh, oh, he knows his stuff. Sweet. Yeah, it's the he little lights, you know, stuff. You, you can pick it up after a while. <laughs> uh, going past here, I gotta ask, what do these buttons do? Oh, fantastic. So these are <laughs> a very visual. When we were going through the design process, we assumed that our customers would like to have the ability to uh, wire these buttons to do specific things as far as like cleaning, bed leveling, uh, and unlocking the door. But we found that our customers didn't really need that. Uh, that being said, it was just cheaper to stick with the original design. And now we call them stress button. You know, just, just buttons that you can click on whenever you feel you need it. Done. You can feel the tension. Oh, dude, there I we go. So there we go. Relaxed. Just don't press that button. Okay. okay. <laughs> that is Got an it. actual emergency stop. <laughs> but these buttons right here uh, are safety buttons that allow you to interact with the machine. Uh, and make sure you keep all your fingers intact. <laughs> yeah. Always a good thing. It's <laughs> nice. I like these yeah. things. Yeah. And then this is the power, right? Correct. This is the yeah. main power switch. This will uh, turn off the machine, obviously. It runs on 240, three phase? Yes, 240, three phase. And it's yeah. pretty easy to just plug in and you're good to go. And for guys that only have 240, maybe they don't have access to three phase, can they use this? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I could help you. I really hey, do. you get to upgrade. <laughs> now, yeah. now, this is the highest end version. You also have like the 280 uh, or the, you know, 
two. We have the 180. Or, we have the two. The 180 Yes. 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 So yes, the, yes. So there's a range. Do the lower temp versions run on regular 240? Is it all three? They run on 240 also. Cool. Okay. So let's go back to the material. So it's going yes. back up into there. Yes. And tell me about the extruder and hot end you guys develop. We have this thing that we made. Uh, it's called the hosel. We wanted to make sure that we could extrude filament at a very fast pace. And so we designed it to be just this giant, basically cylinder with a coating wire and ceramic encasing it. It gets to a really high temperature really fast. Really fast, like really a fast. couple seconds, right? Yes, it unfortunately spoiled me. Uh, my, <laughs> I get mad at my ender at home because my hosel gets gets to temperature yep. wicked fast. Yep. At these big industrial companies, yeah, we're selling these huge machines, but most of the guys, we use the enders, we use the other stuff at home. You're at home using your Ender 3, your Prusa, et cetera. You can totally get into this industry because those are the skill sets that are needed. And that's one big topic here at AMUG this year is the workforce and the technicians that aren't really available. A lot of you guys out there, they're just doing hobbyist stuff. You have a skill set that's needed in the industrial space. So keep that in mind. If we open yeah. this, it will uh, shut down, uh, shut off the, the right. Brain, obviously. Not right now, but yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what's going on in there. We have yeah, uh, linear motors, they have encoders in it and it just slides, like glides along the rails to get us that very accurate precision that we're looking for as far as mass production uh, manufacturing. So let's move on to what are we printing in here right now? So this is actually, this is one of our show pieces. It's a very large part. We like to let people see not only the verticality that we can print in, but also the, you know, the dimensions and how fast we can go. Right now we're printing with PCTG, which is kind of our PLA variant and it allows us to print at higher speeds. We can hit a maximum of uh, like uh, 500 millimeters per second squared as far as speed. Uh, now, asterisk, that's with PCTG, when we're playing with peak and peck, we wanna make sure to hit those edges just right. We're looking at speeds of 100, maybe even 120 millimeters per second. The good thing about this is you can see here whenever he uh, got him real close, yeah. that you can see when we started the print with our G code, it came in a little hot, a little melty. And all we did was we tweaked it on the HMI to get that smooth surface area using our HMI screen. Now, from my knowledge, and uh, not we've worked with you guys in the past, why yes. not, I also know that, you know, PCTG, uh, for at least net-shaped parts, you can print a lot faster than 500, right? Uh, yes, we can. Can, can print, don't rec necessarily recommend, you're gonna get a perfect part every time, yes. but we're talking 800, 900, right? Yes, if I want to design something that has lots of decent long curves, long travel paths, yeah. I'll hit that speed, just consistently. So yeah. yes, good point. Very good cool. Point. This is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time. Sure thing, sure um, thing. If, if you guys have more questions, want to know about this machine, think this machine could do good in your shop. You're doing high volume production of very customized parts or just extrusion based parts for end use or even for prototyping. Hit us up at visionminer.com. Learn more on the machine at visionminer.com slash Ascentium. And we're here to help and answer all your questions. Great team over here. Thank you so Thanks. much, Evan. Thank you really so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. I'll see you on the next video.